She is a former stage magician and stage hypnotist. He was voted Variety Entertainer of the Year in the Excellence in the Arts Awards. Did we mention they also used to be married to each other? Now they have rejoined forces for a talk radio show. <laughs> you know, one thing they didn't address in this poll, that's crossover sex. They completely ignored the value and excitement of hate sex. <laughs> You're big on that, aren't you? <laughs> You're big on that. Well, I hate to brag, but I've had a couple grudge sessions in my life. Uh-huh. From the East Coast to the West, all across America. Two voices of logic and reason. Live from the entertainment capital of the world, Victoria Wayne and Doug Basham. They are exes on the air. Well, let's have at it, folks. It's another wayward, wicked day here in Las Vegas. If you've got some time, hey, let's talk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Doug Basham. And I'm Victoria Wayne, and welcome to another unpredictable edition of X's on the Air. That's right, folks, and contemplate this. We were divorced for what, V15, 16 years? 16, Somewhere 17 years. Yeah. During that time, we had absolutely no contact with each other whatsoever. Not a phone call, not an email, not even a tweet. If I saw you on the street, I started running. That's right, you did. <laughs> and yet, here we are now, reunited as co-host on the air to bring you folks your weekly reality radio show, whereupon we take a look at the lighter side of the news most of the time. Uh -huh. The website is www.xs, that's E-X-S, xsontheair.com. The address to email us on the air or off is show at xsontheair.com. And while you're at our website, look for the links to both our Facebook and Twitter pages. Follow us on Twitter. Be our friend on Facebook. Well, B, any new stories happen to catch your attention this week? Not this week. Not this week? Not this week. Well, ironically, there were several that caught mine. Yes, I'm and, sure. And we will get to at least some of them. Momentarily. But before we do that, let me remind you that any of our stories that you, we do discuss on the show, that we have the full story on our website. And again, that's xsontheair.com. And our website is also a blog, which means that you can post your comments on any of the stories that you hear us talk about. Or you can just call us at some point during this hour while we're on the air and give us your take on them in person. Please do. Our number here at the station is 257 KDWN, that's 257 um, 5396. That a girl. <laughs> or you can email us at, at show at show at xsontheair.com. I'm always confused at that. Yeah, show at x's on, I don't know. <laughs> xsontheair.com. You said the same thing like two minutes ago and you did it perfectly. Yeah, I know. I, know. I always uh, stumble over that. The second time. The second time I stumble yeah. over it. Yes. By the way, V, yes. you know what yesterday was? Yesterday was National Ask a Stupid Question Day. Was it? Yep, that's a holiday that's celebrated primarily here in the United States. The default date is September 28th. And I'm sure you uh, celebrate it. Well, <laughs> I, I celebrate that day every day. That's true. I try to ask at least one dumb question there. I, I, that does not surprise me. Or, or is that our day? <laughs> Whatever the case, it's mostly celebrated by students and teachers. Uh -huh. And the default date is September 28th, but most often it is celebrated on the final Friday of the month. Yesterday was both, September the 28th and the final Friday. Well, how about that? And I thought I would begin the show by asking a dumb question, but I'm going to do it in the context of a brief segment, hopefully, we call This Week in Colonics. <laughs> now, yes, what's your question? My question is, yes. prior to last week, you went and had three colonics. I did, and I had three last the week, week before. you went and had three more. Yes, yes, yes. How many did you have this week? This week, I had two. Two? I had two this week, yes. Now, I have a question. Yes, ask me. After six colonics, yes. what could possibly be left? Actually, eight. I mean, I'm, 
Well, no, okay, but I, I was asking in context why you went back for two more this week. Oh, Because I... after six, I would think that anything they were going to get would have been gotten. I'm starting to suspect you're going there just for the thrill of having somebody, you know... No, 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 nobody, I'm the one that does that. Nobody does that. Um, Michelle hands you... The tube? The tube, and you take care of it yourself. It's a self-insertion deal. Yes, and it, it's... Much they, like my sex life. You're given a glove with lubricant, and it's all done very... Uh, it's very clean and neat and quickly. And very sterile. It, very sterile. It, you bet. Very, they're unbelievably clean. You know, I don't know anybody in the history of civilization that has had eight colonics in three weeks. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. I did it about um, seven years ago, about. I went and had, uh, I think I had 15 done in 30 days. <laughs> yes. So I'm slowing down on this. 30 days? Yes. You're going to be just a former shell of yourself. No, I feel, I feel better. I physically feel better. It's a... Well. Uh, it's a great experience. I'm telling you, I keep going back just for the soup. Now let me for ask soup you, alone. what do they recommend is the advisable number of col I mean, I'm sure they don't say get three a week. Well, no. They, um, I think they say do three together. You can buy packages. It's the least expensive place in all of Las Vegas to get this done. It's like for the first colonic, I think they, ch they charge $50 I paid. So it's the least expensive. Then they want you, if you ch so choose, to buy a package. Packages are like three of them or six of them or 12 of them. And you choose, depending upon how blocked you feel, how sluggish you feel, and you feel better. I mean, I'm telling you, if you anyone's interested in getting a clonic, go call Donna. She's at Las Vegas Colon Hydrotherapy. And just ask for Donna, and she takes care of you, and you feel fantastic. And, and what is Donna's number? Um, <laughs> I'm very... Two, two five seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, that's the radio two, station. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> but I'm glad you asked that. I, I thought you would have the number handy. But when you say call Donna, it's always advisable to have Donna's number at I, the ready. I do have that number handy. Can you see it? It is four... 471 <laughs> Yes. That's Donna at Las Vegas Colon Hydrotherapy. Call now, 471 Yes. Lee, I got a question for you. Ask me. Back when you were still a kid, let's say middle to late teens, uh -huh. did you, I mean, we've, we've all done stupid things, especially back in our younger days. Uh -huh. But did you do anything back then, say middle to late teens, that you would describe as either risky or dangerous? Um, I remember the time that I mis mixed uh, meat and dairy together. I thought my parents were going to kill me. Now, which category does that fall into, <laughs> risky or dangerous? <laughs> it was dangerous to have to face my parents after that, and it was a uh, risky... Uh, no, I've, uh, I've, well, I grew up in a bubble. My parents didn't leave me out of their sight. I wasn't allowed friends. I wasn't allowed to go play. I was allowed nothing. I stayed uh, in the house and was their little princess. Well, you know, I mean, we, we both know that both of your parents have passed. Yes. You're allowed to have friends now. Uh, am I? Yes. <laughs> where, do, where do I go? Where do I go for that exactly? Me? I use the yellow pages. <laughs> for escorts. <laughs> no, the reason I ask is because yeah, something I, I saw a bunch of stories today that kind of involve, shall we say, quote unquote, today's generation. And I found them kind of shocking. Here's a story from Ohio. It happened on Sunday, a week ago tomorrow. This 16-year-old high school student decides to go car surfing. I don't, I don't know what that is. Well, that's when you go surfing, but if, instead of riding waves on a surfboard, you get up on top of the roof of a car, and the guy drives the car. So well, you, you surf the road That's on the insane. Top of the car. That's pretty insane, yes. They're doing this in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, go on. <laughs> I thought only Troy would laugh at that. <laughs> Why would Troy laugh at the Walmart parking lot? <laughs> Earlier we had a conversation, and I had said something, you repeated back to Troy, and you said he laughed and thought it was very funny, and I said no, it was an insult. Oh, the thing about dinosaurs, that, that's yes. That's why I'm... Okay, go on, Kettle, go on. Kettle loses something in the explanation. Anyhow, yes. they're doing this in a Walmart parking lot. Yes. He falls off the roof, hits his head on the pavement, and dies as a result of his injuries. Falls off the roof of the car, 
and falls in the parking lot of Walmart. Onto the pavement. Yes, and he's Severe gone. head injuries. Yes. He dies. Okay. The family's going to sue Walmart, probably. Probably. <laughs> but well, my, security should have stopped but them. But my point is, yes. did you ever do anything? I mean, when I first got my driver's license, I had a tendency to maybe drive a little faster than I should have because it was new and it was exciting. But I got wrecked enough on my bicycle that the thought of car surfing or something that dangerous never even occurred to me. I never even heard of that being done. No, I've never heard of that being done. You hadn't heard of it up until today. I'm not, I'm not, not until a couple of seconds ago, right. Uh, I don't know. I try to read the Torah from left to right and I got in trouble. I, no, I don't know. I, uh, nothing. Other than mixing mi uh, deep meat and dairy. Yes. Deep and merry. <laughs> Lovely couple. Um, did you do anything that you would consider risky or dangerous? What was the risky or dangerous, most risky or dangerous thing you ever did as a teenager? Oh, I'm telling you that I wasn't allowed that out of the was, house. That was it. Yes, I wasn't. Al I never. You weren't allowed to go to school. I went to school. Well, but there was times you could get in trouble. No, that, I never. Spoke. Unless they accompanied you to school. They walked me. <laughs> but they didn't sit at the back of the classroom. No, but I didn't say a word. But you were just an angel. You never tried anything risky. Or I never said a word to anyone. And uh, came right home, and I was a perfect uh, mommy's little princess. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, not out of choice. I was just so brainwashed by them. That <laughs> okay. Now, I think you will find this story interesting. Yes. Kids are a little older, this story. They're college well, students. Wait, 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 wait. Deb, what did you do that was risky? I didn't do much. I mean, when I turned 18 and it was time to experiment with alcohol, there were times I had a little too much to drink. Now, I find that hard to believe. A couple times. Oh, yeah, back when it was new. Really? Absolutely. See, I really didn't do that either. I didn't. Wow. My, I mean, my parents had a, they would share a beer, and then they would offer me like a, a little thimble full. They would share a beer. They would share a beer. That's as much as my parents drank. I don't know if that's cheap or romantic. Maybe, maybe <laughs> well, a little both. And they gave me a sip, and that was, that was my, that was it. <laughs> and how old were you when they started offering you sips? Oh, uh, a teenager. Okay. 15, 16. A couple times when I maybe had too much to drink, I drove when I should have. But I felt I was in enough control. But I mean, other than that, I didn't really do anything risky either. Yeah. I mean, this thought of car surfing? Yeah, well, that's insane. Okay. That's insane. Next story, college students. But they're still basically kids. This happened last weekend as well. Yes. A University of Tennessee fraternity is facing suspension after an alleged alcohol-related incident at the chapter's house on campus over the weekend. But what do you hear what the alcohol-related incident was? Yes. These guys got together, and they gave each other, are you ready? I'm listening. Wait for it. Yes. Alcohol enemas. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so painful, even the walls are groaning. <laughs> the walls. That was tagging. That uh, wasn't meant to be. Wait, that could be very... Uh, very dangerous. This 20-year-old Alexander Bratton was dropped off at a university medical center around 1.30 a.m. Saturday. Hospital staff told Knoxville police that Bratton was in critical condition and unresponsive when he arrived with a blood alcohol content level greater than 0 0.4, which is considered toxic and potentially deadly. Yes, yes. So sure. investigators go to the frat house and they find several other people passed out in the house for the same reason, alcohol enemas. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Well, police said that the practice, they, they might have been doing it because the practice heightens and speeds up the process of alcohol entering the bloodstream because it bypasses the liver's filters. Well, that's good news for people with damaged livers. <laughs> I can't do it. You got a tube? <laughs> really? Now, apparently, this isn't the first time that this chapter has been in trouble. Okay. That couple of years ago, they were placed on administrative suspension after a hazing incident where pledges were asked to do push-ups on broken glass. You know, that whole hazing thing is so insane, and it's very disturbing. Like, I don't want to have a movie that's in a movie or something. I don't want to see it. It's Some funny. people would say the whole frat scene yes, is insane. Yes, it's very the hazing disturbing, scene. yes. But, you know, there, there's nothing gay about frats. You know, the quiet down while I shove this up your butt. You know, that, that's almost Liberace gay. You I know, don't understand. You know what I'm yes. And I guess it I don't could know. almost pass for legitimate rape. <laughs> We're back on that! Next, ah! I always find a way to work it in. You too. Next thing you know, V, it'll be toy cars. But 
at least no sheep were harmed. <laughs> you know, I, you, you and I both know, I don't drink that much. No, not at all. But w whenever I do feel the need to get a buzz on, I'll just drink more the conventional way, thank you, and let yes. the alcohol pass the liver's, you know, the, the filter of the liver and do its thing naturally. A buzz on? <laughs> No. That's funny. Right, but, I, mean, I know what you mean. No, I don't know. That's funny. A it's funny to hear you. You are so not a drinker. So it's just you're just. It doesn't mean I don't know the lingo. <laughs> or is that not the lingo? I, I don't know. I just want a glass of wine. That's but, all I know. My, That's my, the lingo for me. My question is how fast do you need a buzz to do something stupid like that? I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, drinking fast will do the same thing. It just takes a few minutes longer. I don't do that either. I don't get it. I guess we could call it butt chugging. Ugh, I'm a slow drinker. Kind of gives, kind of gives new meaning to the old phrase, bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> if you took me to happy hour, you would know that I'm a slow drinker. <laughs> Enemas, folks. It's not a race. It's a journey. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this story had another story there about young girls soaking tampons in vodka and inserting it as an alternative. Where do alternative? you get these stories? Where do you get this? Where do you dig this up from? I get this on the interwebs. That is disgusting. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's move on. Don't, don't, you do not have a picture. You Tell me you don't have a picture. <laughs> I don't have a picture. Thank goodness. I was going to show you in person. <laughs> no. <laughs> you notice how she, her feathers didn't get ruffled when we're talking about the alcohol enemas, but all of a sudden we move to... <laughs> It's both Vodka disgusting. It's, and now it's disgusting. It's a horrible story. Let's let's move on. Let's move on. Oh. Well, by the same token, B, if I brought a story here that said the, these pledges, uh, don't 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 read. <laughs> I'll get to it when I'm ready. Yeah, let's just true. mind your own business. I was trying to peek. If I brought a story and these pledges got into no trouble, went home to see their parents on the weekend, and had apple pie and ice cream, what would the interest be? Well, I don't understand the hazing thing anyway. How can you surrender yourself over to strangers because you want to be part of a club and, well, I'll do whatever they tell me to do. They want to stick this where and put well, what? Some Damn. people surrender their, themselves to frat houses in, in an attempt to be wanted or needed. Others just keep a collection of their exes on hand. <laughs> it's the same goal no. and the same need, just no. different methodologies. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, next story. This is an 18-year-old girl. Yes. She starts off by ramming her car into a police SUV. The policeman gets out, handcuffs her, sticks her in the back of the SUV. Two minutes later, she manages to break out of her restraints, get out of the cage. She gets in the driver's seat, turns on the lights and the sirens, and takes off. And it leads to a chase that lasted a half an hour and reached speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. Get this through the mountains of Colorado. Yeah. You ever been through the mountains of Colorado? 100 I'm, miles an hour is a dangerous speed on a straightaway. Yes, yes, yes. Mountains of Colorado? I understand. So they tried, the cops tried several times to ram the girl off the road. Didn't work. They finally got her with a spike strip. Now she's pretty banged up, but she's okay. She's been charged with attempted vehicular assault on a peace officer, vehicular eluding, aggravated motor vehicle theft, resisting arrest, driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs, and reckless driving. I was going to say what alcohol and drugs was she on. That was what I was going to ask you. You know, last week... Was it, this is an 18-year-old. Think back to when you were 18. Did nothing like this ever it. happened to me. Yeah, no, I, I know it. Or anyone I knew. And you in your bubble. Yes. You I, were lucky to get a sip of a shared beer. Do you know last week, was it last week's show that you said because uh, I, I listened to it and you said bath salts or something, and I, hadn't, I didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah, remember that story in Miami? The, right, the, right. The fellow who chewed the other guy's face But off? I had to ask somebody after the sh... The buzz was, <laughs> he was on bath salts. Yes, when you said it, I thought of bubble bath. I did not... <laughs> I didn't know what you were talking about. But that's about. my whole point. You take a new drug and give it an innocuous name right. like bath salts and no one takes it seriously. Right. When I listened to it again, the show, uh, that I understood. They should call it face, the face <laughs> chewing drug. It might have more impact. But bath salts? Hey, what could be wrong with bath salts? Yeah, I, you know, these are insane people again. Well, they got Thelma. What happened to Louise? <laughs> now, this story had a link to another story. Oh, go, go, oh, yippee! It had a video. Yes. Another teenager. Uh huh. Her name is Shelby Figueroa. She's picked up by the police. 
She's placed in handcuffs, hands behind the back, in handcuffs. She put, cop puts her in the back of the seat, starts to drive away. Yes. She lays down, kicks the window out of the back seat of the car. Oh, and by the way, the thing I forgot to mention, the cop gets on the highway and he's going 55 miles an hour. She kicks the back window out of the car, slithers herself out, and jumps out of the car at 55 miles per hour. A teenager. And you can see in the video, the cop goes away, but his camera is trained on the back, so you can see what's going on. You see her rolling over the highway. Well, these are people taking, you know, uh, they're, they're uh, mind-altering uh, drugs, and they're not thinking like a normal human being. <laughs> and they, they were raised by monkeys or something as well. They must have been, I would assume so. Yeah, I, I just find it amazing. Oh, I, by the way, I have a picture of, uh, this is the one. That's not Cindy Debbie. No. I'm trying to figure out who. <laughs> I don't know if this is the that first. That was a private one. joke, folks. Uh, yes. Oh, this was the one that uh, stole the cop car. She's very pretty. And, and after she hit the spike strip, the car rolled. That's why she's a little banged up. And that's her after. Yeah. That's before and after. This is after stealing the cop car, hitting the spike strip. She looks like a conservative, normal, nice person. You would never dream that she would be a lunatic. Exactly. And yet, look and then to did. risk to risk her eyes and her vision and her limbs. Oh, ugh. it's a different Horrible. generation, Dave. I yeah, I yeah. don't, I yeah. don't get it. Where did we go wrong? I mean, you almost get the feeling that we missed something. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's a different world. Thankfully, so. It's a different world, and it's scary. Okay, yeah. I have an exit story here. Yes. Go on. I like that. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Here's what happened. Yes. Tuesday. John Vincent Caruso and his girlfriend, Stephanie Madwell, were having a very heated argument at their home. As people are wont to do when they become angry, Stephanie began swearing. You can relate to that. <laughs> Apparently, they have young children. Now, whether they had them together or they were hers before they right. met, the article wasn't clear, but there was young children living in the house with them. Right. At least one of them was a parent. Well, John wasn't happy with the possibility of Stephanie's loud swearing waking up the children. So he gave her a warning, much like the one I'm sure we all got when we were kids. If you don't watch your language, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Did you ever get that one? Uh, I never said a bad word, so no. But Really? I didn't do anything wrong Is as a kid. Is that why you're making up for it now? <laughs> I want you to don't say bad words. What do you mean? You're always catching yourself on the air saying, oh, can I say that? Well, words like poop and stuff like that that I'm not sure of, that's all. <laughs> not, nothing terrible. Who are you trying to kid? I talk to you off the air. I know how you talk. What, do you think I talk badly? I speak well, kind of... I, I see... Do you think that? I didn't know well, that. No, no, the question... That's a, it, I can't answer in the context the way you asked because I don't think including a little profanity in your language is necessarily bad. It's just the way of the world. And sometimes a point just cannot be made without using profanity. Do I? Yes, but do I, do I use that more than you do? Not excessively. What do you mean more than I do? <laughs> well, I just never thought about it. I never thought of it at all before. But that's just, because it's just a common practice. I guess so. I you guess know. so. I didn't know that I was doing that. <laughs> I'll have to be more and aware that, of it. That leads to a question I have asked many times in the past. At what point in our history did somebody say, okay, poop is okay, but the S word isn't? Oh, yeah. I mean, but we're all where, taught where, where that... All, yeah, but where, where did this originate? I think my parents gave me a memo under my bedroom door of words I wasn't allowed to say, and I read it and went, okay, okay. Parents gave you memorandums <laughs> under your bedroom door? All the time, no yes. No wonder you ended up so dysfunctional. <laughs> I'm very functional. Really? I think I'm the, one of the most functional people, without a doubt, that I've ever met. Wow. I could tell you stories. Memorandums under the door? Yes, they did. Well, because I would lock myself in my bedroom all I could just see picking up a note. It's time for bed. Good night. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of memo? No, I was smothered. I, I was never... But no. Have you uh, never thought of that? Where in our history did someone decide that some words were going to be okay? Yes, yes, and I understand. And others are going to be quote-unquote profanity? Why should there be any restriction on any word? Why can't they all be okay? Well, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I, get, I haven't given it any thought. But, <laughs> but I never knew that I was using words I shouldn't be using. That's because, see, I never got the memorandums under the door. My mind is clear. Oh, I sure did. To explore things like I this. I did. I got a list of do's and don'ts, and there was... I was raised uh, very black and white, very... I realized that by Dear people Victoria, that... Dear Victoria, gone on vacation. <laughs> the sitter will be here shortly. No. Well, I never had a babysitter. My parents wouldn't leave me with a babysitter. No. 
Really? Yeah. No, I, I was well, very well supervised. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, no, I would have liked some little separation from my parents from here, to, you know, here and there. I would have liked some space. Well, yeah, true. But I mean, at least you know why they smothered you the way they did. Out and of love. Out of protection and love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not, not necessarily a healthy way to raise a child. But and, and they were so fond of you that rather than speak to you in person, they slipped memos out of the door? No, they spoke to me in person all the time. They would clip out articles from the newspaper and put them under my door about <laughs> they did it all the time, honestly, about people being murdered well, and what, slaughtered what and all that. What it was time to eat? Did they, <laughs> did they only make a diet that could be slipped under the door? I mean, what no, if, I interacted with them. We had dinner and family night. You, you actually night. sat down at the table? Absolutely, dinner? yes. Every night? Every night. Nothing was slipped under the door? No, just notes. <laughs> I never thought about this being funny before, but just... <laughs> wow, and that, that says a lot. <laughs> but it did make me, they were trying to warn me about what goes on in the world, and I wouldn't watch the news with them, and I would lock myself in the room, so they would cut out newspaper clippings about people being murdered or whatever was going on. So even on. back then you didn't like watching the news? No, yeah, they, they, wow. yeah, they watch the news constantly. And that's something that you have held forth all these years. Anyhow, folks, it is the bottom of the hour. We'll be back on the other side with more goodies just... For your entertainment, you want to join us, 257-KDWN is the number. That's 257-5396. Back after this. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I just realized something. Yes, tell me. For the entirety of that break, yes. I didn't have the microphones turned off. It's a good thing neither one of us said something. <laughs> oh, really? I don't know anything about it. I actually sure. forgot to I just want to turn them back on now. They were already on. Yeah. Like That's amazing. Job. Anyhow, folks, in case you have just joined us, the name of the show is X is on the Air. I'm Doug Basham. I am joined by my lovely, intelligent, and talented, somewhat dysfunctional co-host, Victoria <laughs> Wayne. I'm not dysfunctional in the least. Whoa! <laughs> As I speak, she is showing me a picture of my, well, a picture of me on her phone. <laughs> I just thought I'd share that. Do I have anything on in that picture? No. Well, I didn't think there was anybody in this world that had more nude pictures of me than me. <laughs> I may be wrong. I Anyhow. just came across that and thought I would share it. Wow. And I take it you took that picture. Uh, I think... I think you took it, actually. Wait a minute. I can't find no. it again. Anyhow, Please. folks, if you would like to join us, our number here at the station is 257-KDWN. That's 257-5396. And look, we understand that basically this station is, shall we say, a political show, and we're not doing a political show. However, you don't have to restrict your comments to what we talk about. Right. We could do political, but you have insane views, so we won't. Oh, you're so adorable. You're so adorable. <laughs> Just throwing the people of the station the red meat they are. Oh, I love it. Oh, no. It's what's in that, my... That was such a subtle form of sucking up. I am proud. Oh, no. It's what's in the heart of my bottom. Oh, it is my I'm... genuine, sincere thoughts that you have nutty, nutty views. Adorable. Yes. Just no, adorable. No doubt about it. If you could see nutty the look views. on her face right now, folks, you would be mouthing the words adorable at home. <laughs> Perhaps even saying them aloud. Anyhow, the point is, if you want to discuss politics, we're not opposed to that. The reason we don't do it is because, quite frankly, it's hard to have an intelligent discussion about politics today. But if you'd like to attempt it, hey, we're open to that, aren't we? Sure, we're, we, we are, but, you know... You with your lack of dysfunction and me with my nutty views? <laughs> That's right. We, we can handle pretty much anything here. <laughs> That's right. I, I would think so. So, folks, don't feel restricted or hindered <laughs> or handcuffed in the back of a police car. Yes. Pick up the phone. I'm sorry, to sound like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> we, we need a tote board. Yes. Call us at 257-KDWN. That's 257 257- Five three nine six on topics we talk about or topics we don't. Yeah, and absolutely anything. You want to get political? Hey, go right ahead. You want to ask questions about colonics? Go right ahead. Please don't. <laughs> no, do, do. <laughs> Anyhow, I started a story before the bottom of the Yes, hour. you did. I'm, I'm eager to hear the rest a of this. A couple having an argument. Yes. The woman starts swearing. Yes, in front of the children. 
Well, there were children present. Yes. The, the, her boyfriend didn't want the children to be awakened by this loud profanity. Oh, rightfully so. He gave her a warning. Actually, he gave it to her three times. Oh, this has something to do with, with soap. If you don't watch your language, yes. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Yes. Well, what happened? She continued swearing. He went out, got a jar of liquid soap, came back in, grabbed her, and started squirting the soap down her throat. Well, that's not okay. That's not okay. You think? Yeah. Okay. Now, she slaps the soap bottle out of his way and kept swearing even more. <laughs> yeah, like he's nuts. Yeah. Then she called the police. Of course. When the police arrived, they asked John if he actually had poured soap into his girlfriend's mouth. He not only admitted to it, but also claimed that he quite often did it to himself out of respect for his parents, who used to slip him memos under the door. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, that wasn't there. I, I made up that last part. Okay, But I gotta tell you, he does sound like one of these guys who as a child was hit on the head with a Bible every night and now believes Adam and Eve rode dinosaurs 3,000 years ago. <laughs> you had to get that in. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a previous discussion. Uh -huh. um, no, his parents abused him. And therefore, uh, he felt it was okay to uh, continue the abuse, either to himself and to others. Well, it's here's the payoff. Horrible. The police were not impressed with John's dedication to clean language. He was arrested on a domestic battery charge. Well, you think? <laughs> well, of course he was. Why, were you a little confused about that? You thought maybe it was okay? Well, no, I didn't think it was okay, <laughs> but I thought, you know, domestic battery for squirting soap? I, that was very severe and dangerous and horrible, and yes, and I would have called the police on him, and I would have uh, had him removed hmm. permanently. Now, mind you, this John is no angel himself. He Apparently, he's been arrested several times. Yes, he's a nut! 2006, drug possession attempting to elude police. There you 2008, go. 2008, drug possession again, attempting to elude police again. There you go. And then drug possession in 2011. I guess he finally realized he wasn't good at eluding police. <laughs> And get this, the article had a quote from his parents yes. regarding his line about washing out his own mouth with soap out of respect for his parents. They said, quote, a much better way to show your respect would be to clean up your life and stop getting arrested. There you go. <laughs> End quote. Yeah, there you go. Another nut. But, but, this, but the fact that he feels the need for this self-flagellation to wash his own mouth, mouth out with soap. It's horrible. I would say he was brought up in a bubble. Well, he, <laughs> no, he was abused as a child, probably. Yeah, rest of it. He's trying to keep it, he's trying to get the circulation going in his arms. I would uh, suspect. It's like about 50 degrees in here. Yes, no, uh, go on, go on, go on for your next story. Oh, okay. I will indeed. Oh, this is a woman and a husband. They were taking a quiz Equation in the on. magazine Cosmopolitan. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Yes, go regarding on. Regarding ex-lovers. Yes. Also, they were drinking at the time. Now, apparently, one or more of the husband's answers about his ex-lovers ticked her off. They got into an argument. She started swearing. He told her to watch her lane. Oh, that was the other story. Okay, they got into an argument. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I knew that. The wife says her husband threw two knives on the floor and told her to stab him. He starts to walk away. What does she do? She picks up one of the knives and stabs him in the back. Now, he survived, and she was charged with aggravated assault. Why not attempted murder? I don't know, but aggravated assault was the charge. Okay. <laughs> and she stabbed him in the back. Now, After he told her to do it. According Which is her. irrelevant, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember what your parents would say? Well, if Johnny told you to go play in traffic, would you do it? <laughs> of course, you probably didn't get that. But. <laughs> no. Anyhow, so, yeah, <laughs> e either way, he started to walk away. She stabs him in the back. But, I mean, hey, you're young, you're drunk, you're in bed, you have knives. Stuff happens. <laughs> well, I mean, the back isn't going to stab itself. But the point is, it was done over a Cosmopolitan article regarding your ex-lovers. So I thought that might lead us to a discussion. Do you think a discussion between a couple like this is beneficial to a relationship? How much does each person need to know about the other's 
past sex slash love life. Are you serious? You don't know yeah. how I feel about that? You don't know? Well, I, I can guess. Because you're, other than your political views, you're very enlightened, you're open, <laughs> You are you are intelligent. You Thank are you. smart. Yes, yes. You are secure. You're not a jealous person. I think you would probably welcome a discussion like that. Unfortunately, as we can tell by this article, not all women are as secure or as open. And apparently, something he said in response to this quiz angered her enough she stabbed him in the back. Every relationship I've had, I've tried to include my new you know, potential husband, you know, my new relationship into my life and into my, you know, and I'm a sum total of all of my experiences. And so I want to hear all about your past. I'll tell you all about my past. I see, have nothing you have a, to... You have a different approach. Most couples, when they get together, let's say you and another person, would have a discussion well, about we, we, past lovers. Not, not with you. Because your past lovers are always there in the house with you. <laughs> That's not so true. So <laughs> it, it wouldn't be a discussion. It would be, I don't know, ask him. No, but I, I, um, I don't know what the right thing to do is. I would certainly think that to talking about everything is okay. And I have nothing to hide. I mean, there's nothing to, there's no reason not to well, talk again, about like it. like I said, you're very open. But, and every guy I have been with, I have had open discussions with them. I mean, Troy welcomes it. Um, I, mean, I can list who is doesn't have a problem. That's not necessary. <laughs> that doesn't have a problem, we except one who was very, very significant to me. And he says, he said that that is the reason for the demise of our relationship, the fact that I talk too much about, which I didn't talk any more to him than any other time in my past to somebody. But he didn't. He couldn't handle it. He was insecure, and he said it was inappropriate, and he couldn't handle it. And, and the only thing I ever said to him was that he was the best, actually. Really? And, yes. I mean, I never said anything complimentary to anybody else. It was that's derogatory. Funny. That's that funny. I, you said the same thing to me. Well, I met him <laughs> hey, after hey, you. Hey, it works. I met him after you. <laughs> but the, but so, the, so, so what are you saying? He was better? <laughs> I don't like where this is going. I, I'd like to think that I was the first, the biggest, and the best. <laughs> you know who I'm Everybody wants to think that. But you know who I'm talking about. Of course. Yes, and it, he couldn't handle it. And it was a huge issue in my life. And I, I didn't get it. I just couldn't understand because what I'm just trying to include you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make so you, you a friend. So you go along with this total honesty theory. See, a lot of people think that, that you shouldn't tell everything, that it's okay to have some secrets. And I guess it would depend on the individuals involved. Well, I think it depends upon your secrets, too. <laughs> well, I've had a very uneventful life. I mean, there's no secrets. I lived with this person for a few well, years. And, there and was they, that time you drove to Mesquite naked. Well, but I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. I don't even remember it. <laughs> I don't really well, even remember. You forget, there was a third occupant in the car with us, Al Kohal. Oh, well. No wonder you don't remember. Not in the car, but before we left. But that was still in Laughlin. It wasn't in escape, by the way. I thought you didn't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Wow. See, I said, you know, I wish I could be, I wish I could say I said mesquite on purpose to trip you up. Yeah, that's what I did. I knew it was lawful. I have, but speaking about having a glass or two of wine first, I have never, that has never altered my sexual behavior, ever. Really? Yeah, I would have. Well, that's because you don't get to the point where you kick windows out of the back seat of cop cars. You bet. You control yourself. I have never once, ever, seen you falling down drunk. Oh, ever. never in my life. Never, I've never been. Now, now, mind you, you have a fairly high capacity for alcohol. I mean, I don't know if the bar is stocked enough to get you to that point. No, you <laughs> you are comparing that to you. You're comparing that to your level of endurance, mm -hmm. and you have none. Well, you have no tolerance whatsoever. I know. One drink, and I did a buzz. Yes. Can, can I say that word? <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's fine. But you, uh, no, you have no tolerance whatsoever and that's why you think that. So I can have three glasses of wine and yes, I'm fine. Okay, I have a question. Did yes. you and I have that discussion about past lovers, past sexual experiences? Absolutely. I have with everyone I've ever been with. I'm I not talk asking about, about everyone else. I'm, I'm, I'm narrowing well, with this you. down to me. Yes, with, with you and everyone else I've ever been with. How I did I respond? You were fine. You, I never had a problem with anyone except this one individual. Can you keep this directed at me? You always have a problem with, uh, screw everybody else. I'm trying to focus this on me. Can this is an ego word? thing here, okay? <laughs> Feed my ego. Stop bringing every other man into this discussion. Um, you were fine. 
you were fine. And then um, I probably said, which was, um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to, because I, <laughs> that you were the absolute epitome. You were the best. You were the, you were the perfect example of. Go on. And so there was no, you know, as I said that to this other guy years after you, and that didn't, uh, still that wasn't good enough. What well, part of focusing this conversation on me <laughs> No, I got it, understand? I got it. I slipped there for a second. Do yes. I need to give you a note? Yes, no, Under no. the door? <laughs> I have a question for you. <laughs> under the door. Do you know how many men you slept with? Of course. Really? Yeah. You know the exact number? Of course. How many? I'm not going to say. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not going to say. But of course I know. Why? Because. But I'm... You're uh, open. I'm very open. Okay. <laughs> More than, less than 20. Oh, less. Really? Yeah, less than 20. And you're embarrassed less than 20? I'd be embarrassed to say... <laughs> well, you know... Oh, that, that's why you don't want to say because it's so few. I have never slept with a guy that I didn't know for six months. At least six months. And I have um, never... Oh, you are so mistaken. I'm going to try to think. Wait a second. I'm trying to think. Um, you. Um, <laughs> no. No, that's we not true. We didn't know each other six months. Well, wait a second. We met in August. And we slept together in, let's see. Let January? One August. No, we did not. you got to be kidding me. We did not. You didn't even make no. a pass in August. No, I don't think it was that soon. But. No, January. Yes, yes, it was. It was when I'm... Oh, yeah, but when we met, you, we were both with other people. You can't count that. I'm well, I knew about you six months. I'm talking about the time we went out on our first date. Which was August. We went to the barge at Caesar's Palace, and with, with Joe and that other girl, I can't think of her name, the four of us went there, and then the time that we were intimate was in January. Okay. In these discussions about past sexual experiences and past yes. lovers, how detailed should you get in your description? Should you get into particulars or just stick to the abstract? Well, I don't have any problem, and I want to hear everything from, you know, if you want to talk about it, I like to, I'll listen to, I mean, I, I don't know, it's interesting conversation. We, everyone's had a past, mm -hmm. but they, I, I've heard other sides of it that you shouldn't talk about it and you should leave something to, I, so I don't know. I don't know what the right or wrong is. I just know that I have, and I don't, I'm because I don't... Uh, no, the one sure person that you had a problem with who couldn't handle it, yes. even though you told him he was the best. Yes. Can you imagine if you told him he wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> and he Good was. Agree. He was Suicide by alcohol enema. He was, uh, he was wonderful. Um, the thing is, um, well, I forgot what I was going, I was going to say something, I forgot. Hmm. Darn. Well, maybe it'll come back, but but from this article on this column... Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay. Sorry, I'm <laughs> That's okay. No, I know what I was going to say is that I also, whoever I have slept with, I lived with for at least three years. Three to four years. Say that again. And almost everybody, almost, that I that I have been intimate with, I have had a serious relationship, live-in relationship with. So you never had a one-night stand? No. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> what, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes frivolous, meaningless sex can be quite satisfying. No, no, I can't imagine that. Like my father said, you don't pay the girl for sex, you pay her to leave after. <laughs> <laughs> Dad had a point. Okay, from this article on the Cosmopolitan Quiz, it yes. took me to another story. Okay. Actually, it wasn't a story, it just asked a question. Yes. And people responded. Would you date your best friend's ex? <laughs> that, that was a dirty laugh. Which, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I find that one of your more, more appealing. You're attributes. saying that to my best girlfriend, yeah. would I date her ex? Yeah. Um, I would ask her how she felt about it. Okay. But I have. I think that's honorable. Yes, but I have been in situations that were sticky, but not 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 on that side, but with. What side do you refer? To what side do you refer, dear? Where I have maybe dated the guy's best friend <laughs> after him. I've never done that to a girlfriend, no, ever, never. Oh, so you, you're dating, you're changing it to say yes. that you date your ex's best yes. friend, not your best friend's ex. Okay, well, how about your ex's yes. best friend? Yeah, that's... We uh, can do it either way. Right, that I would do if the relationship was over years and years and years. So you'd have a time factor. 
Yes. In other words, you wouldn't do it the week or two after. Absolutely not. One of the comments I read said that you should leave it the amount of time that the people went together. If they went together for six months, I've heard you that. don't do anything for six. Right. Three. But then, you know, if they went together for three years, or even if they were together for 20 years, yes. you got to wait 20 years before you date them? No. Right, right. But I was with this person for three years, and then it was like eight years later that I was with his best friend. Another criteria could be when that other person becomes involved with someone else. Yes. And they're not alone anymore. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Usually after me, they never. I'm not saying. I'm, ha, usually after me, ahead. they never have another relationship. You're the exception, I understand, but hold, mostly. Hold it. After you, they know you ruin them that bad. <laughs> Very often. That, that, that's not a real good thing to put on your resume. Do you know I've never had a guy cheat on after me? After I ever? have a. <laughs> so they say. Although that's true, no. I, ne I never did. No. Well, you, if anyone would have, it would have been a you. But nobody, nobody did. No, no one has. Now no, wait a minute. No, if anyone would, if it that, was you. That was cold. Well, that's true. If anyone would have cheated on me, it would have been. By yes. the way, folks, we are rapidly running out of time here, and I don't see anybody on the phone. Even after I opened the door for you to discuss politics, what? Are you afraid? <laughs> are you afraid of these wacky views Victoria seems to think I have? Is oh, he does. Oh, trust me, he does. Well, then you'd think they'd want to challenge me on it. <laughs> oh, no, it's only, the, it, we only call when we know the host is going to agree with us. <laughs> Well, what, what do you call that? You are, I think in some circles, cowardice would be the right. The side that you take is so, you're so emotional about it. It's not logical, you're just emotion. And that's what's, on top of everything else, is very disturbing. I'm an emotional kind of guy. Yes, you are. <laughs> I can <laughs> snap at any minute. That's no. true. <laughs> that's it's true. not true. Well, is there anything wrong with bringing, I mean, if you don't bring emotions into it, what do you bring? Yes, but it's all emotional. It's not logic. It's, it's but emotion. But you do understand that that emotion is fueled by passion, which is fueled by belief, which is fueled by fact. Well, other than political, I like the passion that exists inside of you. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, forget that, folks. We don't want to discuss politics. <laughs> I think I just scored a point, though. I, I may be mistaken. I mean, not that I've experienced it in the last uh, 17, 18 years, but... <laughs> well, no. You, but thinking back... You chose to deprive yourself. You, you surround yourself with all your exes, but not me. You know, which begs the question. Why wasn't I included in that circle? I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't have your number. I didn't know where you were. Oh come on. Oh, I, I didn't know how to reach you. And you were very scary. We ended that, that bad. That time you saw me and I was running away. You knew where I was. You just had to follow. <laughs> you were running into a Home Depot when I saw you. What five years after we broke up? I saw you in a parking lot, running, looking at my car and running into Home Depot as I was in my car in the parking lot, going, "Is that Douglas?" I had a critical home project I was about to get to. <laughs> It necessitated getting to that Home Depot as quickly as possible. <laughs> you see that? See? What? Still, no calls. Yes, I, I'm disappointed in that. What, 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 do you think, what, what do you think we need to do? I, um... Go ahead, say something. Throw them some more red meat. Tell them how great Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan are. Go ahead. See, we'll see if that works. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's not that they're so wonderful. It's the other guy is so horrific. That's what's... Uh, that's the, the thing that's scary. Horrific. But anyway, yes. Your life has been horrific the past four years? I thought your life had been pretty good. Well, if you have to look at it, which is better now or four years ago, no. It's way better four years ago. Really? When George Bush was president? Uh -huh. Even Republicans don't say that. It was still of course better. you're better off four years ago than you were or now than you were four years ago. George Bush isn't president. No, anymore. not. You said it backward. Anyway. But um, you knew what I meant. But we're not on, <laughs> but we're not on long enough. I think that's the problem. Another hour should do it. You think that's we, it? Yeah, I think that we... So you, you think the people are not calling because they're waiting for the second hour, even though they know we only have one. Okay, I, I, I can buy that. I think if we were on longer, but it's just a, a short thing. They forget it's just Saturday and it's... Uh, well, well I, got, I got an idea. I got an idea. Rumor has it the afternoon host is no longer on the air Monday through Friday. Yes. Let's say we just show up Monday and commandeer the station. <laughs> then we have three hours a day to do with what we please. And you have a built-in audience of people who are not used to being able to call a local show at that time of the day who all of a sudden would be. True. That's I mean, it, is just, it is just an audience ripe to be plucked. Right, yeah, you've got a good point. So if we get here, say, 2.30 ish Monday, <laughs> Jim can show us how to lock the studio door before we leave today. We commandeer the station, bingo! <laughs> it is now, a date. <laughs> it seems like a bit of an extreme measure just to get phone calls. <laughs> but 
I think overall the, the plan has merit. What do you think? Uh, I, uh, uh, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, if you're willing, I'm willing. Okay, two thirty. Maybe we should make it two. I think we should make a phone call first. It's been a while since I commandeered anything. <laughs> I, I, I might be a little rusty, you know. Anyhow, two five. Do we have enough? We don't even have enough time to give out the phone numbers. Oh, do it anyway. <laughs> Why? There's a minute left. <laughs> Go ahead. You talk for a minute. Give me. A We're talking about dating your best friend's ex or your ex's best friend. Have you ever done that? Yes, I have. Well, I know the situation. You you were in a sticky well, triangle. Well, I've had that happen to me, too. Yes, the yes. The fellow who was the best man at my wedding, yes. my first one, right. ended up dating my ex-wife. Yes, before me. But the thing is, is that, that, that you were already like divorced five years, because that's what he would tell me. He'd say, what's he so upset about? It was a five-year span. Yeah, but there, there was more to that situation. I mean, there was a kid involved, and there was, you know, all sorts no, of stuff. Anyhow, we, we can't get into it now because we are out of time. <laughs> hey, folks, chew on what I just gave you for a while. We'll be back here Monday afternoon commandeering the station. What? Join us then. No. Until then, you take care. <laughs>